Hello, everyone. My name is Araceli Garcia, and I am a teacher on special assignment for the multilingual department. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to complete the lesson planner for the Apple folder, which is our monitoring tool for our English learners. This is especially important for anyone who is a long term sub, who is new to the district, or maybe needs a refresher on how to complete this uh, documentation. Now, I always like to believe. Uh, be begin with the why. Why do we have to com uh, complete this paperwork? Well, we all know that our English learners have a legal uh, right to receive equitable education. And so uh, as a law and a mandate, we will need to make sure that we are providing those services. I know that because of the pandemic and everything we're going through, there's been a lot of inconsistency. We have a lot of uh, subs, maybe uh, staff shortages, a lot of students uh, who are absent. And so it, it is definitely challenging. But uh, if we always keep in mind when we're leaving our lesson plans or when we're creating lesson plans that our English learners uh, need some accommodations, they need some support. And so that's what we're going to talk about here. So uh, you always, you know, once you find out where your uh, English learners are at, and you can do this again, here's a link on the Google Slides that I'm going to send you. You can take a look at the ELD standards and find your grade level. Uh, you can kind of see what what is uh, what do the students need to be able to do. And so uh, I like to look at this sheet here, take a look at the different uh, modes of communication. So we want our students to collaborate, take a look here. So this is a lot on just having conversations. As you can see here, they get more and more uh, you know, complex depending on the level. So you'll see here your emerging students, your students who are maybe new to the country, um, and then you have your expanding students. A lot of students fall in this area. And then you'll also have your bridging students that are on the next page. But I also want to show you that these modes of communication that you're going to see is called collaborative. So again, a lot of the speaking skills, listening skills, interpretive, that has more to do with your reading skills and vocabulary. And then your productive uh, mode, which is uh, your production of language, and that could be in the form of a writing task or a speaking task. And so again, if you go to this next page, you'll see that this is where you have your bridging students. Now, a lot of times we think our students, our English learners seem to be speaking just fine, right? Like uh, you listen to them, you're like, what do you mean they're an English learner? They speak all the time, right? I hear them. But a lot of times it's just conversational English and uh, they can be very good at the conversational uh, Right, informal language, but the, as our data shows, the reading and the writing skills are not there for our English learners, especially our long-term English learners. And so here, if you go to the ELD standards, you'll, you can go through and find your grade level, and then you'll see uh, how this is broken down. And so I really like this page here because this is where you can see very specific things that you should be doing with those students. So let's say I have an English learner. I'm in grade six. Here are my ELA standards. And I want them to work on a group project. And it says here, I want them to exchange information, right? So I want them to contribute to a class or uh, take turns following rules. I want them to ask questions, affirm others, right? So what are my English language learners, my English learners going to need to be able to, to get to this, right? And that's where the planner comes in. And so this is the uh, lesson planner. I think I erased a couple of things here, but you need to put, you know, indicate which course, as you can see here, what grade level. And so here's where you put your basic information from your unit. Let's say you're doing study sync or you're using your, your uh, science standards, your science unit. And here's the prompt, right? So this is what all the students are going to be doing. And you can read it there to yourself, right? They're basically going to be writing um, and answering these questions here. Right? And it's pretty complex even for our students uh, who are English only. But again, you want to think about, okay, so if I have an English learner who is still at the expanding mode, I need them to produce more language, right? And so here you'll see again that collaborative, interpretive, productive uh, modes, right? Okay, so I'm thinking of my lesson and I want them to work on some writing, but I want them to work with other students. So take a look at what this teacher did. So this teacher is indicating that the students, the English language learners, are going to collaborate with their peers by reading and editing short to medium writings of others. 
So again, notice how the teacher kind of highlights or puts in bold that yes, the whole class might be reading two pages, but maybe my English language learners are reading shorter, a shorter piece. Students will use sentence frames when needed. Now remember, English learners are different levels. Uh, some might need it, some might need a little bit more, and we are differentiating here. So the teacher is indicating the writing frame to help them create this piece. Down below, you'll see that again, the students will deconstruct the writing prompt, right? I, again, the teacher is gonna provide some discussion frames. If you look here, the teacher is also going to use RACE, which is an acronym for a, a writing activity that students do that breaks down, you know, restate the question, give the answer, cite your source, right? Give an explanation. And so again, a lot of just scaffolds to get to uh, this task right here. Let me show you the second page that this teacher does. And so here is, again, they're doing something productive and it's going to be a three to five paragraph uh, writing prompt. So that's what all students are going to do. So, uh, you know, sometimes we get Apple uh, planners, these lesson planners, where the teacher just writes, students will write a three to five paragraph, um, you know, essay and then put a period. Well, all students have to do that. That's the expectation in an ELA class. So uh, what are you doing to support the students to be able to reach this task? And this is where the teacher is, again, putting independently. The teacher will consult with the student. So this is where you have the short, maybe one-on-ones or small groups. It says uh, they will also be using some sentence starters again. And then take a look down here. There's a part two, how English works. So we're looking at text structure, expanding, enriching. So all of this, again, is in that ELD standard. And here the student is, student will use basic growing knowledge of the text. Right? So as you see here again, you know, the teacher kind of went above and beyond and just really highlighted or made in bold uh, the specific things that the teacher is doing to help support the English learner. So you'll see here again, students can refer to their notebook, uh, maybe use some student models, right? And online sources. Now, uh, again, if you want to take it a step further, you might want to indicate which online source you're using that is very specific for the needs of our English learners. And I, in a moment, I'll provide a few. Uh, again, take a look. Uh, you're choosing a couple of standards, and then you're just basically, again, stating how you're going to support your students to reach those standards. All right, so if we keep going, uh, I created this uh, for a presentation I had to give, and so you'll see this is a interactive uh, slide here. You can click on it. It'll take you to some sources. So these colors, uh, as you see here, will go with basically the standards that are here. So you'll see here again, collaborative is in purple, here you have your blue and here uh, interpretive and then your productive. And so I went ahead and created a little choice board for che teachers so that they can also say like, okay, today I'm gonna start my unit and I want them to do a lot, of, a lot of speaking skills. So maybe I have them use Padlet. Well, how is Padlet a good place for my English learners? Well, with Padlet, rather than just having one student speak out loud or ca calling on hands, they can all participate in this interactive little tool and I could see everyone's uh, post and then they can comment with each other. So again, they're producing language. Again, maybe I want them to do some interpretive work uh, such as reading. And as they're reading, I want them to do some note taking, some annotating. Uh, again, all kinds of different little tools here. And if I go down here, I really love using Flipgrid if they are going to present, right, or Socratic seminars. So all kinds of little fun stuff. Uh, let me keep going here. So here's, for example, one of the tools that I have, and that is Kate Kinsella has great, great discussion frames that I love to use. And I spend a little bit of time going over why do we want to use more academic language? Uh, remember that one of the tasks on the ELD standards was to have students ask questions. Most of the time, they're not used to asking questions, right? Most of the time, the teacher is the one asking questions. So we want to again, very explicitly ask them, okay, you're going to turn to your partner and you're going to use one of these sentence frames to ask them about their weekend or ask them about the reading that they just did. And again, um, maybe they have a little uh, Socratic seminar or debate. So again, these are the kind of skills that you want them to develop. I love using Muse ELA. If you're not familiar with it, whether you're an English teacher or uh, um, social science, even science, as you can see here, take a look. This is for science and math. So it's free. You can sign up for it, uh, get an account. And what I love is that you can assign this or even just print it out, but it allows you to choose a Lexile level. 
And so you can have your students, you know, all reading the same article, but then you can choose the different Lexile level for your English learners. And, you know, and then you can all still have a good, rich discussion. That's another way of differentiating. Notice here some of the other tools, such as reading it out loud, right? You can print it and so forth. You can even present it to the whole class and read it in chunks. Again, there's a link there for you to, to click on. So again, and I did present, like I said, an entire uh, little presentation. If you want to get more information, I, I do work for the district here uh, for the multilingual department, and I'd be glad to give you some more help. Uh, and I hope that that was useful for you. Thank you so much.